Do you think that bristle worms are a reef aquarium keeper's worst nightmare? They're ugly, they move like aliens, and they can even harm the inhabitants of your aquarium or maybe even you. Surely, they can't be a good thing for your tank. Before we decide, let's discuss the good, bad, and ugly about bristle worms. Starting with the bad. Up first is the potential harm to your livestock. Some species of bristle worm can get quite big, and when they get that big, they can not only sting animals, but they may actually go for those animals with a predatory response trying to get them and catch them for food. This is pretty rare, but in the event it's occurring in your tank, it can definitely be a problem. In most cases, the thing that people are going to deal with with these organisms in their home aquariums are the stinging and irritation from the bristles on the worms getting into the mouth or the body of some animal, fish, or coral that you have in your tank. These bristles can cause discomfort, irritation, and maybe even injury if they get stuck into a fish that has a relatively sensitive immune system or skin. Along with the potential harm to your livestock or maybe even yourself are some aesthetic concerns. Many aquarists find these things extremely unattractive and some people have even said that they're nasty or gross and overall feel that their presence in the aquarium detracts from the appearance of the tank. Overpopulation is definitely a concern, and in tanks that are overfed or in tanks that have high detritus loads, the population can grow extremely fast, leading to this mindset that people have had over the years when you read on the internet forums that they're going to explode in population and take over your tank. That is not always the case. You know, guys, I tell you, if everybody who watched one of my videos subscribed to the channel and then went back to the main playlist and hit play all, I could probably have this channel monetized in about a week. Another issue that they pose is a competition for the food resources in the aquarium. Bristle worms are a direct competitor for other scavengers and detrivores in the tank. And if you have that previous problem where the population becomes overcrowded or overpopulated, they can overpower the other scavengers in the tank, take up all the food, and then those animals tend to start dying off over time. This is basically just a pure disruption in the balance of the ecosystem in the aquarium due to overpopulation. Another problem they create will cause stress and disturbance. And this happens when they start burrowing through the substrate, burrowing through the rocks and things like that, disrupting the habitat and the hiding places and even the homes of the other inhabitants in your aquarium, like yasha gobies and pistol shrimps. Bristle worms love to be in those dark, low flow environments. So they get in there and they end up stinging your fish and they just cause a general nuisance problem. They do tend to disturb corals a little bit when they're crawling through where the corals are. They'll make zoas and palithoas close up and things like that. If they get on SPS, they can make the polyps retract and stuff. And they, again, they're just being a nuisance really. So at this point in the video, you're, you're like, my God, why would anybody want to have these things in their reef tank? Well, there are some benefits. They are natural detritus cleaners. They're a detrivore, and they're one of the best ones that you can get. There have been studies done that show that aquariums that have bristle worms in them are more diverse and better suited and have higher water quality for corals and things like that than our tanks without them. They're extremely efficient scavengers. I mean, they are going to be able to get into the little tiny nooks and crannies of the rock work and the sand work in your aquariums and get at that detritus that a lot of other animals just really are too big to get to. And they're keeping the nitrogen cycle rolling in your tank because they're taking that uneaten food and that detritus and waste and they're intaking that and converting it into an organic form of waste that goes into the water column which can then be used up by the bacteria in the water and eventually skimmed or removed from your tank in some manner of filtration. Ecosystem health is another thing that these guys tend to contribute towards. It just makes good sense that having biodiversity in the tank is going to increase the ability for that tank to process things and be a living environment rather than just a tank with some stuff in it. And their presence in the tank and going through all of those actions that I mentioned a few minutes ago just adds to the stability and the resilience of the ecosystem. In addition to that, they burrow through the substrate, keeping that stirred up a little bit, and it tends to reduce the possibility of having hydrogen sulfide gas pockets and things like that in your sand bed. 
They are also a food source. There are fish and crabs that you can get and put into your reef tanks that feed on these bristle worms. And this is going to increase the biological feeding and replenishment nature of the tank. And again, just add to the overall health of the entire system. And on that note, one of the best things that you can do is just manage the population of bristle worms that you have in your aquarium. In my main display behind me back here, I have hundreds, if not thousands of little half inch to one inch bristle worms, all inside the rocks and things like that. When I feed the aquarium, they come out in droves, but they quickly go right back to where they came from and they're not a problem. Adding a fish into your system like an eight line wrasse yeah, you could do a six line wrasse too, but they can be a little bit of a jerk fish. So I prefer the eight line wrasse over the six, or you could even put an arrow crab in your tank. And there's a couple of other ones that'll pick off a bristle worm here or there, keeping the population in check and keeping their numbers contained. Most commonly, the bristle worms that you're going to see in your saltwater aquarium are the kind of peach colored or brown colored ones with the sort of black stripe through their body. Now, if you end up with a fire worm in your tank, they're pretty easy to tell apart from bristle worms. They're generally a lot more ornate and they have a second row of bristles right along the side of their body that are kind of standing up. And usually these have a lot more red in their coloration. If you end up with a fire worm in your tank, you're going to want to take care to get that guy out of your tank relatively immediately because the bristles on these particular ones are venomous and they can do quite a bit more damage than your common bristle worm. And if you have one, let me know because I would like to have it. My opinion on this is one that is shared with a lot of reef keepers worldwide is that bristle worms are actually a beneficial part of our system. It's something that we need to have in our system and they generally don't cause nearly as many problems as the internet would have you think. However, there are always caveats to everything that we talk about in reef keeping. And if they become overpopulated due to overfeeding, or if they become oversized due to just age in the system, you probably want to take some action to remove them. You can do that with a DIY bristle worm trap or any of the ones that are on the market right now. But overall, my conclusion is I want them in my tank. Watch that video right there.